Goblins. They're small, mischievous, outright malicious, and above all else greedy. They love that bling. On today's Monster Monday, I'm going to show you, the DM, how to create a truly memorable goblin experience. Hey guys, it's Evan from D4 Dungeon here. I'd like to welcome you all to another Monster Monday. If this is your first time here, and you want to learn how to level up your D&D experience and get the most out of your gaming time and dollars, then start now by subscribing and hitting the bell below so that you don't miss a thing. Today we're going to be talking about goblins. What is a goblin? This is the most general picture that you get out of the monster manual. They're small, usually around three to four feet tall. They got sharp fangs, pointy ears, and sloped faces. In my opinion, they don't get the respect they deserve. These creatures' eye colors range from red to yellow, and their skin generally ranges from yellow to green. They live in small underground caverns known as lairs, and they breed extremely rapidly compared to other races, which accounts for their large population numbers. I want to talk about the strengths of the goblin first. Goblins are an elusive and nimble race, which allows them to slip away from danger more easily than most. In combat, a goblin will often use this to his advantage, sneaking up on a foe and dealing them a blow from hiding before sneaking away before the creature has a chance to retaliate. Goblins have an extremely high stealth modifier, a plus six, which when paired with their nibble escape feature, allows them to use the disengage and hide action as bonus actions in combat. Goblins will usually use this high dexterity modifier to attack from hiding. They'll use their short bow out to a range of about 40 feet and then move, attempting to break the PC's line of sight before hiding again so that they can attack with advantage again next round. If a player character does close with a goblin, it will disengage, dash, usually 30 to 40 feet, trying to make the PC overextend themselves, and then hide again. Whenever at all possible, a goblin will attempt to end its turn hidden. Superior numbers. Goblins like overwhelming odds. If they have better odds in a battle, they'll often attempt to outflank their opponents and gain advantage on the attacks by having one creature on either side of the player character. A goblin will not attack a player character that has three quarters cover. It will instead attempt to outflank the player character, hide, and then attack from a position that's more advantageous. A goblin tribe that's lost its overwhelming numbers advantage in a combat situation, or has found itself simply overmatched, will attempt to flee. If a goblin's been injured, it may very well surrender, hoping that your PCs will show it some mercy. The goblin race is in general fairly malicious. Being bullied by bigger, stronger creatures for most of their existence has taught the goblins to exploit what few advantages they have. Like ambushes, they like to use dirty tricks, and they'll set alarms and traps to avoid being surprised. Now let's spend a little bit of time on goblin weaknesses. They're small, they're not that strong, they're greedy, and they're self-reliant. A goblin that's defeated a foe in combat, but doesn't have another one in its direct line of sight, will spend its next action looting that corpse for any food or valuables that it may find. A goblin will undermine its comrades for its own survival and benefit, and they don't really work well with other races, except for wargs, who they sometimes use as mounts and ride into battle. Goblins are physically weak. Their constitution isn't that great, and their hit points are nothing to write home about. A goblin that's been injured, say three or four hit points, will flee and perhaps attempt to stalk a player character, uh, hiding and gaining advantage for another strike. However, a goblin that's been seriously injured, say one or two hit points, will flee for good and leave whatever creature caused it this pain to its own devices. If a goblin's captured, they will not hesitate to surrender, usually groveling on their hands and knees and begging for mercy. Goblins have a particular hatred for the Dwarven race. They will attack on sight, depending on the situation and the number of Dwarves. These creatures often combat each other and fight over territory, as they both enjoy living underground. Let's get into Goblin combat. A little bit about their mental state and why they act the way they do, which should help you as the DM understand which actions to use and how to utilize the Goblin properly in a combat situation. Goblins, much like other goblinoids, have incredibly short tempers. They often come to power through betrayal, aggression, or as clerics of their goblin gods. The concept of a fair fight is meaningless in goblin society. They'll use dirty tricks, ambushes, sneak attacks, and whatever other edge they can devise in order to win a conflict. Goblins often like to attack from ambush under the cover of darkness, 
taking advantage of their dark vision and the advantage granted to them from hiding. These creatures like to avoid being surprised themselves by setting alarms and traps to alert them to anyone who's entering their lairs. Goblin Religion and Society Goblins often worship deities in the goblin pantheon, such as Meglubayat, who inspired them with his feats of strength and treachery. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned something about goblins, and perhaps how to DM them and create an exciting encounter for you and your player characters. If you have any comments for me, please leave them in the description below. And if you guys want to learn more about playing or DMing your own Dungeons & Dragons games, or tons of other Dungeons & Dragons stuff, then don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so that you don't miss a thing. It was great seeing you, thanks for coming, and I'll see you next Monster Monday.